Okay. Uh, dear Professor D.W. Park, and uh, Professor Ku, Professor Lee, Professor Liu, and uh, Professor Pan, and uh, all of uh, speakers and attendees. It is my honor, welcome all of you to join QICC and the TCTAP join session. Uh, QICC has a long-term relationship with the TCTAP. So this year, this session, uh, we have four uh, wonderful speakers. We will have a very good discussion. So wish a very successful session and uh, also wonderful TCTAP 2022. Welcome, all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wang. So, and uh, this QICC and TCTAP joint session is uh, the major topic is about the minimalist TABA and next day discharge. This is the absolutely trend of the TABA practice. I'm going to uh, first uh, introduce the first speaker and the Professor Jian Wang. Every, no, everybody know well, he's an uh, international worldwide famous uh, interventional cardiologist. He is now editor-in-chief in Jack Asia, the second affiliate hospital of J uh, Zhejiang University, China. Uh, he will be talking about the next day discharge after tower and result of a smart tower from China. And the Professor Wang, please. Okay, uh, dear colleagues and uh, friends, it is my great honor to introduce to you uh, our recently work on next day discharge. Uh, inspiration from Smart Tiver Study and Wang Jian from Second Affiliated Hospital of Zhejiang University School of Medicine. Uh, here is my disclosure. Uh, here, here are the um, <clears throat> the outline. Here are the outline of my presentation. The first topic I'm going to present is about next day discharge, uh, the current situation and the problems. Uh, so, firstly, we can see in these slides here are three clinic pathways uh, to shorten the length of staying after the tiver procedure. So as we all know, uh, the famous 3M tiver, uh, faster tiver and the uh, Pindemon heart clinic pathway. So therefore the, uh, the tendency of a tiver in future uh, is the next day discharge. Uh, however, there still remain uh, some questions for the next day or early day discharge. Uh, we can see the data uh, from the national wide readmission database published in American Journal of Cardiology. Uh, the readmission rate was up to 10, almost 10 percent after the TIVR procedure. Uh, and the 16 percent of these patients hospitalized uh, for, the, for the arrhythmias and the complex uh, complete heart block. So also uh, the, the arrhythmia remain the question. Uh, we have some ambulatory electrocardiogram device to monitor arrhythmia uh, after the tiger procedure. So in these slides, I, I present you the four type of ambulatory electrocardiogram devices. Uh, the spot single lead EKG, so like the uh, smartphone or smartwatch, and uh, the heart monitoring, and uh, the mobile cardiovascular telemetry, and the implantable cardiac uh, monitor. Uh, it, it is uh, invasive. Uh, <clears throat> So you can see the, uh, the duration of recording and the modality of recording of these different ambulatory uh, electrocardiogram devices in this table. So our smartwatch was uh, uh, intermediate uh, manual trigger. Uh, it is a weak point, but uh, the duration of recording uh, is uh, equal or less than one minute. 
So the, the different type of the monitoring has different uh, recording time and uh, different uh, modality uh, of recording. So from a smart timer, so what do we achieve? Uh, here's the uh, smart timer is the prospective uh, observational cohort study. Uh, so regularly we uh, give the let the patient wear the watch the day before the timer procedure. So after this charge, we start the, uh, the whole recording. So regularly at the first week, uh, twice per, we record the arrhythmia, uh, we record the EKG twice per day. Uh, then the, the, then the, the rest of the first months will be decreased to the at least two days a week. Then the, the rest of first year, at least once per uh, once a week. So you can uh, search the detailed information of our study in the clinical trial following the, the clinical trial number. Uh, actually, uh, initially we uh, we selected the uh, uh, 112 patients. Uh, some patients were in, uh, were excluded because of these following reasons. Now at last, the total enrolled number is 100 patients. So all of patients complete 30 day uh, follow up. Uh, here's the basic characteristics uh, of these patients. So we can see here the average age is around 73 years. Uh, male uh, is a, a little bit dominant compared with the female. Uh, here's the BMI and the STS score is uh, average is, uh, is uh, around the four, around the four. Uh, about the five five percent of patients uh, before the tyre procedure already have a RBBB, and the two percent of patients uh, have the RBBB before the tyre procedure. So first de degree AV block is around ten percent before the tyre and uh, atrial fibrillation and flood around the fourteen percent. Uh, here's the procedure data and the in-hospital uh, outcome. So we can see the most of our patients receive the self-expanding uh, device, only less than 10% receiving balloon expandable device. So here's the pre-dilatation pre rate and the post-dilatation rate. Uh, uh, more than 50% of our patients were uh, among the 100 patients. So among, among the 100 patients, more than 50% of, of patients were discharged the next day, and uh, almost, uh, more than, uh, almost 82% of patients are dis were discharged at the early day discharge plan. It means the less than three days. So we can see here the arrhythmia, and the outcome about the arrhythmia, we can see uh, is uh, <clears throat> the <clears throat> most, ca uh, most cases, uh, occurred uh, less than 10 days. So here's the Brady arrhythmia events. So usually less than what occurred less than when, uh, less, than, less than seven days, one week. So this is the RBBB events. So here's the attacker uh, arrhythmia events. So uh, what is about the 30 day follow up? Uh, we can, can see uh, only one patient with a stroke and no myocardial infarction. Uh, Rehospitalization rate is 11%, and the pacemaker implantation is 4%. So high AV block, 6%, third degree AV block, 5%. Uh, the persistent LBB, 16%, but uh, uh, the total LBB is 48%. So new onsite atrial fibrillation is 4%. Uh, here is the, from the uh, smartphone recording, we, we can evaluate the patients, the number of steps. Uh, they are uh, exercising st uh, status. 
their heart rate and their oxygen saturation change with the time. So we can see uh, here, here's the, the tendency in the first month, at the first month about the heart rate, about daily sports, uh, about the uh, oxygen saturation. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so when the patient is charged, so we still, we still uh, get the information from the remote control, uh, let the patient to trigger the recording, we still continues to get the information. So uh, it's a, it's a non-invasive wearable smartwatch. Uh, it is our first application, uh, the first application of the smartwatch in type of patients. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of the remote healthy care for patient discharge to home after the TAVR procedure. Uh, here's uh, the, this slide uh, emphasize the conduction disturbance uh, with the time after the TAVR procedure. So we can see here uh, at the one week, second week, and the third week, and the first week. So the different type of the uh, AV block. Uh, also, we we had the two cases, uh, two of the emergency cases in smart trial, a uh, smart type of trial. So one is the patient got a ST depressive, very severe ST depressive. So uh, got a ST, <coughs> got a uh, angina. So so we let the patient do the angiogram. Uh, there's there are still some uh, limitations for the smart tablet trial. It's a uh, because of the watch, the the Huawei watch is a is a manual triggered recording. Uh, the data is coming from the single center, so we it's not an RCT study. We need an RCT study. And maybe we can provide a better evidence. So conclusion: uh, near fifty percent of patients develop ARBBB in the first week after tablet. Uh, so the high, uh, high degree and the complete heart block occur in 6% of patients. Uh, so data from SmartWatch detected an incidence of 3% in new onset atrial fibrillation with a 30 day follow up. Uh, it is good, it's a, maybe a very good uh, facilitation for the next day discharge plan. Thank you, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wan. This is, uh, I think, a very nice lecture. We launched a lot of things, uh, smartphone and, uh, you know, uh, wearable uh, smartwatch based monitoring. This is a very nice result. It's a very interesting smart tower study. So we will have a five minute discussion time for the Professor Wang's lecture. Any comment or question? So uh, I'll have a two short question. First question, is uh, you, your data published at Jaha is a very nice paper. Also result is excellent. Uh, a patient is discharged 80% within three days. So my first question is uh, uh, how can you apply the patient selection? Do you apply the all comma patient or some, uh, I'm, I'm concerned about some patient uh, underlying LBVB, underlying high risk complete AV block patients. So, uh, is that how can you do patient selection is the first question. Second is about the if a smart watch is showing the uh, high risk complete AB block or complete uh, uh, the you know AB disturbance or ST depression, ST elevation, how can you position monitor? Is, is there any uh, automatic alarm to position or is, uh, is how can you some cascade uh, position can uh, detect arrhythmia and can uh, immediately, you know, manage the patients. That is my question. Okay, thank you, Dr. Park, for your excellent questions. So about the first question, um, we follow some of the uh, some of the bigger clinic studies, especially the 3M. So following their uh, protocol uh, to make a decision, we still keep the patient. Uh, in ward, or we let the patient be discharged uh, next day or uh, at three days. Uh, the second question is about, uh, you know, we have a, actually the, the platform is uh, not so automatically, you know, we actually we had a, 
uh, we have our staff to to go over the patient's data data. So on the line, it's not the autom automatically alarm giving the alarm alarming. Mm -hmm. So so really we need to we need to have a the, our staff to monitor the the recordings. Then if we get the uh, not critical uh, information, we will telephone, we will call the patient's family or call the patient to try to get, let the patient to have a proper treatment as soon as possible. Mm. Okay. So yes. any, any comment or question? Yeah. So uh, just for the inclusion criteria of the patient, we just uh, include the elective transfemoral mm. Yeah, tower per patients. Yeah, the patient is just uh, uh, relatively stable, and uh, and all of the patients and the family, they write the consensus. Yeah, they can capable. They can be capable of to finish to manually trigger the the wearable device. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just in our uh, in our study, all of the patient and family they can quite work quite well with the device. Yeah, and then we can. Okay. Collect the data and the follow up rate is 100%. Great, great. This all of the procedure were, were, were chest fever approach. Chest fever, okay. Okay, Dr. Pat, there, do you have, uh, Based uh, on your. Uh, uh, okay. You, go ahead, uh, please. Yeah, Dr. Pat first. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't know very uh, long the smart was. And I just have a question. Uh, uh, do you think it's uh, uh, accurate enough for the smartwatch to detect, to detect complete AOB? Well, I think it's quite good. They're actually the recording, you know, we print out, we see the, the quality of the single, but it, actually it's a, it's a single lead EKG, but the, the quality of the recording is, is very good. It's very good. Mm. Okay. The weak point is a, is a single 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 line, single, so single channel. It's a limitation. <laughs> yeah, they have the study of the comparison of the single leaflet with the normal EKG. Yeah, mm. just before the procedure. Yeah, mm. before the study. It is good for the recording the arrhythmia. It's good, mm. including the uh, AV block or the A fibrillation, mm. metrical ectopies. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Professor An, do you have a question? Actually, I have the same question. <laughs> so the, if, if uh, the, is there any patient that we admit to the hospital so the, uh, without uh, any alarming sign by the smart, uh, smartphone? Yes, we have a 10% of, of these 100 patients re be, uh, were re admitted at one month. So yeah. um, some of, I think that maybe 50% of them because of not a non arrhythmia related uh, situation, maybe shortness of breath, mm. maybe other, maybe fever, or even cough, pneumonia. So 10% mm. okay. admission, but only half for the arrhythmia, for the okay. some event recorded by the smartphone, but the other not. Mm. Great. Yeah, four patients. Yeah, just, just come back to the hospital and uh, get the pacemaker implantation. Yeah, mm. because of the yeah, high mm. degree of the yeah, conduction system. I have one question. Is there any difference or uh, arrhythmia events uh, between the uh, type of device, tower de device, self-expanding or uh, volume expandable? Yeah, 90% of the device is self-expanding and 10% of the balloon expandable. Mm -hmm. So it's overall patient is uh, 10, uh, 100 patient is a two, it's some relatively small to detect some big difference, uh, you know, self-expandable and balloon expandable. Uh, it's very hard to evaluate mm -hmm. the differences mm -hmm. because of uh, the balloon expandable only 10%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's time to move to the next lecture. Is the Professor Wang, could you introduce the second lecture? Okay, thank you. Uh, the, the second uh, lecture will be presented by Professor Kong, D.Y. Kong. So his topic will be 
early discharge after the Taiwan Korean experiences after Taiwan. Welcome you, Professor Kong. Thank you for in your kind introduction, Dr. Wang. I'm Dr. Do Yung Gang from Asan Medical Center. Today, I will talk about the early discharge after TAVR, especially for the Korean experience. And actually, I will talk about our centers, other medical centers experience. I have nothing to disclose. Now, the TAVR is a routine practice. Usually, the patient visits the clinic and then admit and walk up for the CT or echo then heart team discussion and gathering the informed consent and undergo TAVA uh, in, in usually in our center Tuesday or Wednesday. And after the TAVA, we, need, we are trying to discharge charge the patient earlier with the next day cardiac rehab and the day after next, the day after the next tomorrow of the discharge. Now the TAVA length of stay has been getting shorter and shorter in many, uh, in many pioneering centers. Early discharge is known to be safe. And also next day discharge is very uh, popular in many Caucasian, many Western centers. In 3M study from the Vancouver St. Paul Center, 411 patients underwent TAVR and in 3M TAVR patient, 327 patients could underwent the next day discharge. And there was no difference in outcome if the patient underwent next day discharge in selected patient. Even same day discharge was suggested, especially in COVID-19 era, because there is some lack of the, the, hospital, the hospital support and also there was some risk for the infection, many centers tried to discharge the patient in the same day. In recent uh, report in the US, 29 patients could be safely discharged in the same day. However, in Korea, especially in Asa Medical Center, still we did not perform the same day discharge. Even next day discharge uh, was not performed in our center. There are some regions because the first in Korea, the cost for admission is very low, about $100 per day, very low and no need to reduce to the hospital stay so much. And second is the reluctance of the patient of the, to the very early discharge after very expensive procedure. Patient need to pay about 30,000 US dollar and the Hospitalization fee is just $100. So the patient do not want this charge next day. And another problem is the smaller body profile in Asian patient, I think. There are many more frequent puncture site problem in Asian patient. In recent TP Tower registry that we published this year in Heart, we compare the Asian patient to US patient and the Asian versus non-Asian. Asian patient had the smaller body mass index and the major vascular complication rate was higher in Asian patient. That would avoid the very early discharge in the, the after TAVR. Another issue would be those relatively well controlled COVID-19 situation in Korea. This is our target discharge goal after TAVR in AMC. First, perform the minimalist TAVR for many patient. And routinely, we are observing patients in CCU, but in low risk subset, we move to gen patient general ward in the day, and next day perform the TTE follow-up and perform the cardiac rehabilitation. That is the key for the early discharge. And we are trying to discharge at POD2. For the successful procedure, minimalist tower is essential. CT-based pre-procedure planning and risk prediction is the key for successful procedure with the conscious sedation, no transesophageal echo, and short time for the procedure and check for the rhythm disturbance at the tower. And comprehensive pre-tower MDCT evaluation shows many data about the outing root anatomy 
and device and size selection, coronary disease status, and root anatomy, and also optimal fluoroscopic projection and angulation. So we do not need the angiography and can shorten the hospital stay. This is our routine city-based valve selection and sizing algorithm. With a comprehensive CT measurement, we could predict and prepare for the high-risk patient and select the valve and can perform the procedure safely. And in the low-risk cell that set for the same day discharge, the same day transfer in our center is like this. Age under 80 years old and normal LV systolic function, and usually for the tricuspid valve, and some patient for the bicuspid, and patient without frailty, that the patient can walk and uh, perform the, the daily activity very well. And another important thing we consider is lower calcium volume. And Dr. Go published our, recent, our central data in patient with a higher calcium volume showed the higher risk of the permanent pacemaker imp implantation and moderate to severe paraverbal regurgitation. So the patient with a higher calcium volume, we consider that the patient is a higher risk. And then the patient with a lower calcium volume, we consider the patient at a low risk and consider same day general ward transfer. Another consideration is the successful procedure, the no conduction disturbance after the tower. The patient should be pacemaker independent and in the ATR, the ATR pacing, no AH block on RA pacing is the key marker for the safe general ward transfer without pacemaker. Also the patient without vascular complication at the tower is the target for the same day general ward transfer. Other patient go to CCU and next day the patient come to general ward and we are routinely performing cardiac rehab for all patients without puncture site problem. It enables early recovery. And we check all the exercise capacity of the patient and perform extensive education for social recovery. This is conclusion. Actually, uh, we are not doing the next day discharge and also POD2 discharge is our target, but still less than half of the patient are discharging at POD2. About 30% only are doing that. But now we are trying to discharge earlier and earlier. Oh, yeah. And early discharge would be a new emerging target in low-risk tower era. For that, minimalist tower is the key. And if it's done appropriate appropriately, it can provide clinical and economic benefits to patient and also hospital. For that, selection of the lower risk subset is very essential for safer early discharge. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Kong, for your excellent presentation. So any questions from our panelists? Can I have yeah. uh, one question? Uh, Dr. Khan, thank you for uh, your good presentation. I'm, uh, I just want to ask about, uh, uh, in general, the 10% of the TAPA population have a delirium after TAPA procedure. So I think it's really nice to discharge, uh, to go to the uh, general world after TAPA to avoid such kind, kind of delirium. And also delirium has a uh, uh, associated with increased mortality. So uh, how do you think about the delirium after that to avoid, uh, uh, to avoid uh, long, longer term clinical outcome? Because uh, how do you control the delirium after that? Because it's quite important to, uh, for the patient clinical outcome. And thank you for your excellent, excellent question. As you commented, the delirium is the very important risk factor for the higher mortality or other complication mm -hmm. and a worse clinical outcome after tower. To avoid the delirium, the most important thing I think is that the minimizing the hospital stay. So mm -hmm. uh, the pre tower uh, the, the minimizing the hospital stay for the pre tower evaluation. And after tower, 
I uh, there is no uh, strict data, no uh, robust data in our center, but still we feel that the CCU stay, ICU stay is very strong predictor for the delirium. Mm -hmm. So we began to perform the general water transfer since last year, and uh, we uh, do not have the robust data till now because only small numbers perform that, but we think that that would be a very good solution to avoid the delirium. And also yeah. in Korea, the usually patron, the patient family stay with the patient. In very old patient, staying the patient with the family is the very good, uh, very good tool to avoid the delirium. So we are trying to generate water transfer early. Thank you for, uh, for the uh, answer, great answer. So minimalist way is uh, also a good way to avoid the delirium. Yes, I believe. Yeah. I, I, have a, I have a question, Dr. Kang. Uh, I'm Charyan Lee. Uh, thank you for your great uh, presentation. Our hospital is just now slowly increasing the number of table case. So some uh, medical staff, uh, such as anesthesiologist, nurse, and interventionists are not yet uh, sufficiently familiar with uh, minimal invasive tabal procedure. What kind of method is used for uh, post-tabal paravalvular leakage ablation in patients with poor TTE view in uh, spine position? Can we get enough information from AR index and post tabal angiogram in all patients? What do you think about this? That's this very important question because uh, many patients are uh, lying in the spine position and the uh, TTE view is not so great. So we are, and also angiographic evaluation is not very accurate for the PVL evaluation. So we are measuring the AR index after top of four or patient. And we are um, using the data from the TTE and AR index to evaluate the, the amount of the particular regurgitation at the top. Of. And I believe that that worked so well in our center and the, the benefit of the minimalist approach would be higher to evaluate the patient with the TEE. So we are like, we are uh, using the AR index. Yes, yeah, so, and uh, Dr. Lee mentioned about the uh, nowadays uh, minimalist TABA procedure is uh, uh, absolutely growing up. Uh, the also trans uh, uh, esophageal echo weight is uh, very rapidly slow down. There are some concern of how can he uh, confidently assess uh, paravalvular leakage the assessment. So, and uh, might be, and uh, Professor Wang, any panelists uh, familiar with the published in New England the Journal of Medicine in you know, about the von Willebrand factor multi-motive fact, and that is uh, some uh, very, you know, point of uh, care is uh, in New England Journal of Medicine, they call the rapid sense of uh, paravalvular leakage and is using the PFA 100. And so PBL is amount is high, is a clotting time is delayed. If you control the well PBL clotting time within five minutes is shortened, is they are suggest some a point of care assessment would be helpful. There was a you know looking at the new NGM is very high impact factor now they uh, investigator doing some clinical trial targeting one thousand patients. One arm is conventional arm. One arm is they are they do. Uh, it's a five minute uh, repetitively uh, evaluated point of care they assess uh, to evaluate the PBL amount. How do you think about that would be some work or some too much theoretical? Is the Professor Wang and Dr. Song, how do you think uh, some such like some rapid uh, is a point of care assessment? Is it too much theoretical? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, several. Uh, I read that article just published several years ago. Uh, very interest, uh, very interesting study. But uh, I agree with your. Uh, I, I agree with you that it is very too much theoretical. So the I believe that the parallel leakage impact of parallel leakage on the long term mortality is very minimal unless the parallel leakage is the very severe. 
So in addition, the uh, our developer complex size is limited, already determined. So we cannot apply the bigger, bigger, bigger balloon post dilatation. So the if we have uh, uh, if we have confidence on the CT evaluation before procedure, uh, we we already knew the maximum post dilatation size and how to do the maximum post dilatation. So even though there was some parabolic leakage based on the uh, autogram or the based on the AR index, uh, if we do the maximum post dilatation, I think we have to wait to avoid the uh, uh, further complication. Mm -hmm. So the TE may not be helpful further in this situation. Mm. Okay. Okay, and the time to over. We, we uh, is, uh, introduce the next speaker and the third speaker is, uh, uh, is uh, Professor uh, Guan Yang Song from Fai Hospital in China. And he will be talking about the minimalist tower all in one technique from China. Professor Song, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Park. Uh, it's been my pleasure to be invited by Professor Wang and you to join this session. So I'm going to report our mini minimalist uh, procedure uh, in my center. Uh, I'm sorry, but I moved to Angel Hospital last year. Uh, now I'm in uh, Beijing Angel Hospital, uh, the capital uh, medical university. Yeah. <clears throat> this is my closure, disclosure. I think we all know that uh, compared with the conventional uh, uh, tower, the minimalist tower, uh, we can save a lot of time. And also we can uh, achieve uh, the same, uh, you know, good outcomes uh, with maybe local uh, anesthesia uh, with or without sedation, <clears throat> with, T, with TTE. And uh, also we can like to minimize, uh, you know, the number in the cast lab uh, from this to this, yeah. And also uh, we have thousands of uh, patients data showed that uh, there is no difference in complications, uh, mortality, uh, stroke, PVL, uh, early in the early stage or in the late stage. So I think this is safe. Uh, so what? Why we uh, uh, try, you know, to achieve the minimalist tower uh, for patients? I think uh, as a patient will feel uh, more comfortable, and also the, the physicians we can save time, we can save money. And we can, uh, you know, reduce uh, the complications um, and shorter hospitalization. Just uh, Professor Wang and uh, Professor uh, Kong uh, showed uh, the very nice presentation. Uh, this is a minimalist, minimalist tower in China. I think last year uh, we did uh, 6,500 uh, 6, 6, tower in China and uh, 400 centers, uh, uh, they, uh, they can do the tower procedure in China. Uh, this is the most uh, experienced center uh, date, I think, uh, uh, in China right now, with local anesthesia, with, uh, with or without consensus uh, sedation. Uh, most of the centers use uh, TTE and perform in cast lab or hybrid room uh, fully. Uh, percutaneous uh, transfemoral approach and uh, without additional lines, uh, especially a uh, jungler, uh, no fully catheter, ICU care in less than 20% of patients and early mobilization and next day discharge. So can the minimalist approach be uh, more uh, minimal? Uh, I think we tried uh, uh, four steps. This is, this is from uh, 2019, uh, July to December, uh, we performed uh, 93 uh, patients uh, uh, with transfemoral tower in Fuai Hospital. And 42 patients uh, enrolled in the first three months. So we used uh, transfemoral and transfemoral uh, ancillary access. And the 51 patients, we used uh, transfemoral and uh, transradial uh, ancillary uh, access. To, uh, to compare the two groups. So from this study, we can see uh, 
there is no uh, difference between the two groups for the motility, uh, the MI and the major stroke, and also uh, the major vascular complications. Uh, but we can save a lot of time as a procedure uh, time uh, from the minimalist approach. We can save maybe 10 uh, minutes and operating room stay time and also the x-ray time. Uh, if you if we uh, want to use the transradio uh, approach, uh, I think the best way is to use echo, you know, to guide our puncture is main access. This is a uh, uh, how to find the bifurcation, and we can see clearly uh, the anterior wall of the artery, and also we can see the puncture uh, point here. This is uh, in accordance with uh, uh, the international um, data, uh, so we can see uh, there's no difference between mortality also, uh, but we can save the floral time and uh, we can reduce uh, the uh, bleeding complications and also the major, uh, I think mainly for the major and minor, minor, minor uh, vascular complications. And the second step is to use uh, wire piercing. Uh, this is also the same year, October 14 in Fuai Hospital. Uh, this is one stop tower plus PCI. This is our first case to use wire piercing in self expanding wealth. <clears throat> As we all know, uh, um, I think it's easy, you know, to perform a uh, balloon expandable uh, valve with wire piercing, but for uh, self expanding valve, uh, we need to consider a lot of issues, especially, you know, if we have uh, uh, the bundle block after the tower, uh, I think it's uh, easier for, uh, for the sick self expanding valve. This is 86 years old uh, male. Uh, so we can see this is really uh, aortic stenosis, but this is tricuspid valve. Uh, this is CT pre-evaluation before the procedure. Uh, <clears throat> and also we will use uh, multi-planar analysis between the procedure. Uh, so we uh, measure every two millimeters above the analyst and also to the AOT. Uh, uh, the plane. So this is a, a membrane uh, lens. This is a 5.1 uh, millimeters. This is a procedure. Okay, uh, we did the PCI here in the distal of RCA uh, with one stent. And we use uh, wire piercing to do the balloon dilation and also to release the valve. There's 20 balloon and 23 venous valve. And uh, I think from October to uh, December, we did 13 cases uh, in that year and published uh, in Chinese Journal of uh, Cardiology. Uh, this is a airway piercing easy tower. It didn't reduce, uh, uh, it didn't make, you know, I reduced the procedure success and didn't reduce the efficacy of tower, but it, it can, you know, avoid uh, some uh, bad complications. And the third step is uh, in Anjan Hospital uh, to 2021 in July 21. Uh, so this is our first case, you know, in the single artery access technique. Uh, this is Gore uh, Chase. Uh, I, I think that day I did three, I did four towers, but three towers, you know, with different uh, type of Chinese domestic valve, or venous, weta flow, and the torus. Uh, but that's all for the first generation. <clears throat> so this is a first case, it's 94 years old. Uh, this is also severely ailed uh, patient. Uh, so this is a CT uh, pre-screening, uh, the multi planar analysis. Uh, it's, uh, I think the analyst is 24. Okay, this is a uh, artery. So we use the uh, local anesthesia uh, with a single artery access from the left femoral artery. 
the right, uh, but we still use the, you can see the RV leading uh, to, to pacing uh, during the procedure. So this is a uh, uh, angel before the procedure and, uh, okay. So this is a pre dilation with 20 balloon and Taurus Elite, uh, Elite uh, 23 valve. Okay, this is a second generation. So we uh, adjusted the position before, uh, during the procedure. <clears throat> okay, uh, but you can see uh, we don't have the trans radio for the second access, access and also another transfemoral for the uh, for the secondary uh, access. We only use the one access from the uh, left uh, femoral, uh, femoral artery. Uh, when we retreat the, uh, the long chase, uh, we did the angio uh, during the uh, retreat. And finally, we have the all-in-one single uh, vascular technique, uh, not only uh, from one artery, but also uh, we use uh, a wire piercing uh, during the procedure. So we can do, we can puncture only one access, only the right femoral uh, access. <clears throat> this is a 71 years uh, old uh, patient. This is a CT for screening. Uh, this is the artery, the multiplanar me measurement. So, but this patient we use MAC uh, because for some patient we find, you know, if we only use a local anesthesia, uh, the patient may have some, uh, um, some symptoms during the procedure. So <clears throat> we can, uh, we need to find the right patient, you know, for the local anesthesia only. Uh, this is the only one, uh, only one case uh, with a wire piercing. Uh, and also you can see there's a, a lesion on the left limb bifurcation, and we did one stent from the LED to the left main. This is a pre-dilation uh, during the procedure with a wire piercing uh, with 20 balloon. And we used the uh, weight of low, uh, 27 valve. This is the final result. I think the all-in-one artery or all-in-one uh, vessel uh, access, um, we need to uh, retreat the peak tail. You know, when we, uh, when we uh, put in the, uh, the valve delivery system. And uh, after that, uh, when the, <clears throat> You can see uh, when the valve was in the descending uh, aorta, uh, we can put the five French pigtail to the uh, non coronary cusp again. This is the only step we added, you know, to the procedure. And for and uh, from autumn to December, I think uh, we did thirty cases. Uh, we didn't uh, we didn't have. Uh, you know, incre increasing time, and we didn't have the mot motility and uh, all other complications and the UMPP uh, pacemaker. I think uh, the all-in-one technique, there is a wide uh, spectrum in the practice of transfemoral tower. The best method for TF tower is still being in, uh, explored. A uh, simplification in each procedure step, I think, should be uh, encouraged to minimize the, you know, the damage to the patient. All-in-one technique aims to minimizing minimizing the invasiveness of transfemoral tower. So less puncture and less complication, and also we can discharge next day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Song. This is a very interesting and a very challenging case. So we will have a, a five minute discussion time. Okay, any question or comment? Yeah, I have a question for Dr. Song. Yeah, very nice talk. Yeah, I like it very much. So I just have only one question. So because just only one puncture of the 
left or right femoral artery. So how you evaluate a post tarver procedure? Are there any complication of the, the femoral artery, especially the stenosis? Uh, because, you know, uh, we, we did thousands of tower, uh, with, uh, <clears throat> I think we have good experience in puncture, <clears throat> you know, the transfemoral access. Uh, and also we use the uh, echo to guide, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I, I think we use the echo to guide the puncture and uh, we can have a good experience to, uh, uh, for, for using the uh, perclose. Uh, we didn't. We didn't have for the thirty cases. We didn't have the uh, vascular complications uh, during the procedure. And also, when we retreat uh, the big sheath, and we will do the angio uh, <clears throat> at the same uh, at the same time to check if there is a you know dissection, if there is a, a perforation or some some kind of, you know uh, complications uh, before uh, we end the procedure. Yeah. Okay. okay, so you will check the, the echo uh, ultrasound. So you will check it post the procedure, or do you just uh, use the pulse? Yeah, you will just the uh, pulse difference, just the, the up or down of the punch site. Yeah, I I know, but but usually we will have only angio uh, before we reach the big shades, and uh, when we uh, touch, you know, the distal vessel. If the distal vessel is very good. I, I, we usually don't do the echo again, but if the distal uh, pulse maybe is weak, so we can we should do the echo again to re to re evaluate you know the puncture site. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Pan, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question for the Dr. Song uh, for the all in one technique. Uh, is the uh, pigtail uh, inter interaction with the <coughs> uh, deliver uh, system? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Uh, so mm. we worried about that uh, before we do the procedure. Um, but after we use the all-in-one technique, uh, because, you know, uh, when we do the balloon dilation, uh, we use a pigtail inside and to, to do the pre-dilation angio, right? Uh, but after the angio, usually we will uh, pull back, pull out, pull out uh, the pigtail. Uh, because, uh, you know, when we uh, go through the valve, we don't have enough space for both casters. So we, uh -huh. we use a capsule. When the capsule is only, the capsule is in the descending aorta, we can, uh, we can put in the pigtail again. So uh, I think we don't, usually we don't have this, uh, uh, connection uh, with uh, both systems, yeah. So I you know. put the pigtail uh, to the uh, land cast, cast uh, before you uh, before you send the delivery system. No, no. I mean, uh, I uh, po I I will. Uh, get out, you know, the pig tail after the pre, uh, the pre dilation, and then we put the capsule in the descending aorta, and then we put the pig tail again. Uh, and usually that time uh, they will not, you know, uh, uh, have influence uh, for for the both season. Yeah. Doctor Lee, you have a short question. Yeah. I have a okay. short question to you. you. Uh, what kind of uh, patients uh, do you think uh, best candidate or worst candidate in uh, for uh, urinal uh, tower uh, in low risk or high risk? And every or uh, every patient uh, candidate for uh, single best tower. Okay, I, I I think that's a good question. Uh, and usually uh, we did the CT uh, pre evaluation and to choose. Um, maybe the patient is not uh, 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 <clears throat> have, have very heavy calcium, uh, but when we uh, have experience after, especially after 20 cases, and usually now this is a routine procedure in my center. Yeah. Hmm, great. Okay, so time is some delayed. It's Professor Wang. Could you introduce the last speaker? Okay. 
The next speaker will be Dr. Anne uh, from SM Medical Center, Korea. Uh, his topic will be a minimalist Taiwan experience from Korea. Welcome you, Dr. Anne. Thank you, nice introduction. Dr. Wang, my topic is minimalist tower experience from Korea, actually as a medical center. What is the current status of the tower where we are? So the, in nine, 2000, uh, 2019, uh, two randomized trial uh, covering low risk population were presented at ACC, the partner three able to low risk trial. So the, from the enough upper population to the low risk population, the, we, ha we had a serial randomized trial. So the, in the low risk population, we have a three randomized trial. So the all meta analysis of, uh, in the low risk population show that the all cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality tower wins. So the, in 2000, after 2019 tower one, over the surgical AVR. So yes, FDA approved the tower for low risk population. So 2019 practical guidelines show that the for low risk population, several tower uh, recommended as one, one or two A. So today tower has become a routine procedure in many cath labs around the world. The local anesthesia, cautious sedation, less than one hour procedure, sometimes less than 30, mini procedure mortality uh, less than 1%. So what is the Azam uh, Tower in Azam Medical Center? So last year, we did more than 200 cases per year. So far, uh, uh, so far that we had uh, uh, more than 1,000 Tower cases. We started Tower program 2010. So last year, we did the two, more than 200 cases per year. So 71% subpain three, was implanted. Next is Sapin XT. The self-expandable device is a very, uh, uh, lim very limited number of self-expandable devices were implanted in our Assam Medical Center. This is a big difference from the US Center. So among the 1,000 patients, the mean age is 80, male is 40, 48%, ST score is four, Diabetes one third, hypertension is 80%, atrial fibrillation is 12%, ejection fraction is almost normal. So device success rate is 99.1%, conversion to surgery is 1.4, coronary obstruction is 0.3, two valuable implantation is 0.9, new pacemaker implantation is 7.4, moderate PVL is 3.9, Major vascular complication is 3.5. Length of hospitalization is seven days in overall population. So instance of pace, uh, permanent pace implantation for subpain three is 7.1. The self-expandable device core value is 26. Evolve R or Evolve Pro is 10%. 30 day outcomes in AMC is Death rate, all death is 1.8, cardiac death is 1.3, stroke is 2.7, disabling stroke is 0.9, the death or disabling stroke at 30 days is 2.7. So the, in 2020, 30 day outcome is uh, one, month uh, one month mortality is 0.6, stroke is 0.2, permanent pacemaker implantation is only 6.6. .6. One year outcome is like this. One year mortality rate is 7.5, stroke is 4.4, rehospitalization is a little bit high, the 22%. And overall AMC outcomes, one year uh, at, at one month, overall mortality is 1.8, major stroke is 0.9, vascular complication is 3.5, well, permanent pacemaker is 7.4 moderate to or severe PBL is 0.9. But the 2020, the overall uh, procedural success rate is increased. The uh, overall clinical outcome is improved. 0.6% one, one month mortality, major stroke is 0.6, no major vascular complication. Point one to pacemaker is 6.6, .6, moderate to severe PBL is 1.8%. 
what's the difference in other medical center cover? We had a strong, very strong, perfect, collaborated heart team. Uh, actually, heart team is working in other medical center. In addition, we, we did the contemporary minimalist approach, simplified the procedure. In addition, the, we determined everything before procedure based on the CT algorithm for device selection. So minimal, minimalist approach, the no general anesthesia, no TE, no complication, even no urinary catheters. One day CCU discharge, trying to discharge patient at three days after tower cardiac rehabilitation programs. Actually, we did the cautious sedation the five years ago, since the 2017, 2018, 2020, almost all cases uh, of TAVR, we performed under the cautious sedation, not the general anesthesia, ex uh, except very extreme cases. So we, uh, this is a patient characteristic between the general anesthesia and cautious sedation. The cautious sedation, a patient age is 80, male sex is 40, uh, 46, so SDS score is uh, 3.97, hypertension is uh, less, uh, peripheral vascular disease uh, less than general anesthesia. So this is uh, the procedure characteristics, aortic valve area, other characteristics are similar, but uh, cautious sedation, we implanted more on an expandable valve than self-expandable valve. This is the procedural outcomes. The compared to the general anesthesia, cautious sedation population, device success rate is higher, 99.9. Carbondial to surgery is lower. Coronary obstruction is similar, but new pacemaker implantation is lower. Uh, PVL is lower. The major vascular complication is lower. The length of stay is six days, lower than, uh, less than the general anesthetic patient. 30-day outcome is also better in the cautious sedation population. All deaths is uh, only 1.0. Cardiac death is 0 0.7, stroke is 2.2. Breathing risk is also smaller than the general anesthetic patient. It would be uh, due to the different characteristic between the general anesthesia and cautious sedation population. So compared to the all uh, population, the general uh, minimum this the general uh, cautious sedation population almost mortality is only one percent. Major stroke is point seven, so major vascular complication is point eight. Permanent face maker is six percent. Moderate to severe PVL is two point one. So I think the careful selection is very important for the minimalist tower, and dedicated procedure technique and post procedure care are the keys to success in minimalist tower. In addition, if done appropriately, we need the case selection is I think a very important. Minimalist tower can provide clinical and economic benefits. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. An, for your excellent presentation, uh, especially with a very good, excellent st statistic data. Uh, you are doing very well in Cancer Medical Center. Uh, <clears throat> Maybe I, I just ask you a question for, for all of the uh, Korean colleagues. Uh, what is your, uh, beyond the procedure itself, uh, what is the Korean the, uh, the insurance policy? So uh, <clears throat> the, the shoulder of the, uh, the shoulder of the length of patient, patient staying, the, the more benefit for the hospital, other, I don't know, what is your, your policy? I think the Dr. Gang actually involved in the, the insurance policy in, in our uh, country. So the Dr. Gang may respond to the, your very important question. Uh, still, the fee of the tower is only covered, 20% is only covered by the national health insurance. And the patients are now paying 80% of the tower fee. Then if the, we add the procedure fee, device fee, and about 30,000 US dollar, the patients are paying. Now we are trying to make change of the covering the insurance, and it will be soon further uh, covered by the, the insurance. I 
I think maybe in this year, it will be the coverage range will be upgraded to 50 or 80%. Thank you. So okay. any more questions? I, well, okay, I, I have one the question and the, you know, uh, in the Dr. Professor Song's uh, uh, lecture in China last year, uh, China, uh, in China, its power was performed the more than uh, 6,500 case, also more than 400 uh, uh, center in China. So uh, I have a curiosity for uh, how many percentage is now doing the minimalist power approach using Mac without general anesthesia also uh, how they do some nice transition from the general anesthesia and the, uh, you know, MAC procedure is, uh, you know, in Korea, we have some limited uh, size and limited center. We will have uh, some very interactive discussion in each center. Uh, the distance is not far, but in China, it's a very big nation. It's not easy to, uh, you know, share the knowledge, procedural knowledge about the TABA procedure. How can you... How, how, how many percentage or so how can you, uh, you know, share the procedure knowledge? Okay, Professor Wang. Hi, Dr. Park. It is a, a, a little bit hard to do the statistics, uh, you know, but uh, you know, because there's, just like you point out, there's so many centers involving the procedure. I say that, but among the, the top 20 centers, uh, I'm sure the uh, <clears throat> the local anesthesi local anesthesiology plus sedation instead of the general anesthesiology, I think should be larger than uh, I think it should be more than eighty percent at least. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, Doctor Song and uh, Doctor Liu? Yeah, what, yeah, what, I think uh, I think in the top twenty, I just like uh, Professor Wang said, uh, I think eighty percent uh, should be. Uh, Performed with minimalist tower. Mm -hmm. More than eighty percent. Yeah, I totally agree with Professor Wang. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. We we used to use a lot of T to monitor the procedure, but now we mm -hmm. just a T T T. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even mm -hmm. even me, I after the procedure, I just see that mm -hmm. do the T T to see mm -hmm. whether there's a residual regurgitation or not. Yes. So it's the last uh, last question is some some political question. We have a uh, not always a good relation with the cardiac surgeon. You know, however, our nation is emphasized a good relationship between interventional cardiology and cardiac surgeon. Is it like some mandatory you know agreement between interventionist and cardiac surgeon? Sometimes we have some conflict. You know, aging. Uh, we we try to. Uh, even younger age, 68, 69, is cardiac surgeon is a, sometimes very strong resistant. They don't agree in any type of procedure. So how can you resolve in China in the political condition with the cardiac surgeon? I think the different hospitals is different. So if the cardiology chief, like me, uh, the president of the <laughs> hospital, but different hospital, di different. But I, I just ask you, uh, Dr. Professor, uh, Professor Park, I just ask you your, the same question. Uh, what is that situation in your hospital, in, in Cancer Medical Center? So what is yeah, the, so, uh, yeah. your <laughs> they, 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 yeah. they, they reject the Taiwan or they, they also do the Taiwan compete with uh, your team? So our center is uh, some particular center. Our, we have a very good relationship with the cardiac center. Just, uh, I guess, uh, just except two or three center, relationship is not good. It's always fine. Yeah, there, there is a real, real, you know, realistic situation. And some center is uh, never discussed with the cardiac surgeon. And the, some center sometimes doing the cardiac surgeon to top up without any consultation of intervention cardiologist that there was some real life, yes. <laughs> Actually, in my center, uh, our surgeon just uh, worked with us for the trans epical uh, hardware procedure, but they never do the trans or other way type of procedure by themselves. Yeah, so, I think uh, cooperation is very important, you know, uh, with uh, surgeons uh, and also surgeons with interventionists uh, because, you know, uh, 
they have less experience, you know, in the international uh, procedures. Uh, you know, if they do as uh, a transfemoral tower by themselves, they will have a lot of uh, complications in the early phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think the time is already done. Is I would like to sincerely ask a, a final closing remark, Professor Wang. Well, he, uh, welcome you to, to do the closing remark because I has the I has the I, I have the opening. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I think this is a very nice uh, you know session. Would be very helpful for many interventional cardiologists in China. Uh, and also in Korea is learned a lot of things, uh, real practice, uh, how can you do a minimalist top approach in the, I think this session would be very helpful and to understand the real top situation in China and Korea. Thank you everyone. And thank you, Professor Wang, Professor Wang, and Professor Liu, Professor Pan and the other doctor and really appreciate your sincere support. And uh, uh, we ho absolutely hope to see all person in our next year TCTP 2023 in-person meeting without concern of COVID-19. Thank you very much for participating in our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.